Okay guys, I am here to give you my law review and um, update for WWE 2K14. If you're wondering about the helmet, I, uh, well, I'm just going to show you. Eh? Yeah, I just got out of the shower, so I figured I'd just do it in the helmet. So, uh, this video may be two parts because of the copyright. Um, I was very busy this week. I missed Raw because we had to go to a drive-in. We had to go see Smurfs 2 and some of the Conduit, and I missed some of it. Well, I only got to see <coughs> the crap, the shitty parts of it because of some certain person, and you know who you are. Second reason, well, we went to the Cape, came back, was tired, so I went to bed early. I watched some of the Raw, though. And then the third reason is I went, and then on Wednesday, I went to um, Candy Be Like Polk. And I just didn't get to finish it because the laptop was kind of dying. Uh, but I don't think it should die for this video. I got 2 hours and 58 minutes. So I'm just going to get to the WWE 2K14 roster update. Um, and I'm going to tell you all the guys that are in there again. We have Dolph Ziggler. You already know that. Uh, JBL is actually a new guy that's in this game. And... Uh, Oh, JBL, you really fucked him up. Like, his face looks bloated in, in this game. JBL's face looks bloated in this game. Um, it's not even funny. Kind of actually is funny, but... I don't know why JBL, they made him his face bloated, but they did. So, JBL's in the game, but his face is, like, bloated. His, his, like, they messed up on his face. Um... They, last year on WB13, they did the same thing with Eve, and she didn't even look like Eve. This at least looks like JBL, except his face is, like, bloated. I can just... His face is, like, bloated. Then we got John Cena. I already know about him. Macho Man Randy Savage. I already know about him. The Rock. I already know about him. Ryback. I already know about him. Shawn Michaels. Stone Cold Steve Austin. The Ultimate Warrior. Undertaker. And the current Undertaker and the American Badass Undertaker. So, you already know about those guys. But as for JBL, he looks bloated. He absolutely looks bloated. Um, it's just not even funny. So, let's just get right into the wall review. Um, as for Raw, it's a pretty good wall actually. Um, didn't mind Raw. Uh, some matches weren't really that good, but... And the crowd just didn't care for him, so... This wall was for August 6, 2013, and... We have JBL, Michael Cole, and Jerry the Kid Lawler on commentary. JBL is back. Back in action. And they actually did Daniel Bryan's corporate makeover. And actually showed... Stephen McMahon actually showed a video package of it. Um... And... It showed him, like... Working out in the gym, getting his hair done, getting a tuck seat, seat on, and he had like, then he came out, he had like a ponytail in his hair, and he talked about how he's willing to do whatever it takes to, to what they want to become the new, to become a WWE champion, and he, he kind of trashes Cena a little bit, talks about how he's this big guy, and he knows that John, Daniel Bryan can't beat him, and that if, Dan, if John Cena had to quit wrestling tomorrow, um, he would be fine. He wouldn't have to. He would never wrestle again because he's got all the mansions. He's got the cars. He's got movies he can go to. As for Daniel Bryan, he has to go back to the bottom. And it's happened to Daniel Bryan before. He talked about it. He didn't really talk about it, but he mentioned how he got fired before. The night that Nexus debuted, and uh, he choked Justin Roberts with his tie. And I guess that wasn't PG. I don't get it. Still don't get it. Um. And I'm glad they brought him back, because I guess he realized how stupid it was. And then, um, Vince McMahon comes out, and he, and he says that Daniel Bryan, he's starting to warm up to Daniel Bryan, and he likes the fact that he will do whatever it takes to become the WWE Champion. And, um, Daniel, he tells Daniel Bryan to shave off the beard. If he wants to be WWE Champion, um, you, he has to shave off his beard, so he goes to shave off the beard. Wade Barrett's going to be the barber of for this, and bef and I guess he was a barber before he came into the WWE. Everybody knows that's not true. Wade Barrett actually 
was um, a bare knuckle fighter, so I don't know why they brought that up. But Dandelion does it, dude. He attacks Barrett, shaves off some of his beard, and sends Barrett into the crowd. So, oh well, I don't know. It was okay. And then Daniel Bryan says that he's not going to change just because Vince McMahon asked him to. He says that he, when he becomes WWE Champion, he's going to do it as himself. And then he accuses the shirt and he says that the beard is here. Then Rob Van Dam and Alberto Del Rio are backstage going to face each other. We get Rob Van Dam versus Alberto Del Rio with the Miz on commentary since he's the host of SummerSlam. I guess he's going to watch the match. What exactly does the host of SummerSlam mean? He's Miz is going nowhere. I think that means that they just, they just have nothing for Miz. And they're like, you're going to be the host of SummerSlam, Miz. So as for this match, Del Rio barely got any offense in. All he really got in was a kick. RVD got most of the offense. Ricardo Rodriguez actually... We turn, and um, she tried to help out Del Rio by putting the bucket into, bucket into the corner, but RVD reversed, and Del Rio went into the bucket and did a split leg roll up for the win. After the match, Del Rio attacks Ricardo, super kicks him. Um, what else? He hits him with the bucket, and he puts him in between the steps, and he kicks the steps into Ricardo. It was, it was okay. I didn't mind. Didn't mind it. Then we get WWShop.com ad, and then we get a Cody Rhodes promo, and he asked Damian Sandow to come out because he has a present for him, and it was actually his Money in the Bank briefcase. Uh, he found his briefcase somehow. Um, I don't know why he went out and got it, but he did. And then um, he had Damian Sandow is not gonna fall for it, so he has Cody Rhodes put the case down and go outside the wind so he can get it. He, however, he, he before he can get it, Cody Rhodes attacks him. Then he opens up the um, briefcase and his contract's all ripped up. So I guess that means that world title scene may that world title match maybe means no more. I'm assuming it will. I'm assuming like after SummerSlam, I'll have like a new contract and everything's gonna be just fine. Uh, WWE Rewind. I don't remember this really. I, um, I think it was when Ryback was bullying that guy. Let me get Ryback versus Mark Henry in a WrestleMania rematch. Um, Ryback, like when Ryback, Mark Henry got some offense in, Ryback left, and, um, got counted out. <laughs> Why? Uh, the Bellas are backstage, and they're, congrats, they're talking about how gorgeous they both are for Total Divas. Even Marie comes up and hands them hairspray and loves what, how they made fun of uh, Natalia. Natalia comes up and slaps one of the Bellas and leaves. Waste of time. John Cena promo. He comes out, talks about... It was a boring promo. He talks about how if he had to stop wrestling, he would never wrestle because he's passionate about the WWE. Um, I doubt that. And he talks about how he, he's not going to change for everyone. He always has been himself and always will be him. And at SummerSlam, the champ will still be here. As for that, though, Cena kind of was long because he came in as the rapper, so... Uh, Orton comes out and says that as long as he has the Money in the Bank contract, the champ is here. And then the Shield come out, they go to attack Orton and Cena. But Brian comes out to even the odds, and then Brad Maddox makes the main event. Orton, Cena, and Brian versus the Shield, so that's fine. Um, we get tons of Funk versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper with Bray Wyatt. Um, same thing as on the SmackDown when they made the debut match. It was just a squash. Um, then Bray Wyatt keeps talking about Kane, how he's not the demon. The demon's still alive and live. And then Kane comes on the screen and says that he, Bray Wyatt tortures people for to send a message, but Kane tortures them because for his own personal reason, for his own personal enjoyment. And then, um, Dan, Kane says that, at, um... What's it called? Oh, at SummerSlam, it's going to be Boy Wyatt versus Kane in an Inferno match. He says I'm out of Winter Fire, but I think that means the Inferno match. That is going to be awesome. I haven't seen... The last time they did an Inferno match was when they did MVP versus Kane in Kane 1. So, um, 
I think though that having Kane versus Bray Wyatt is going to be great. They, they both have um, fucked up minds. So it's going to be great to see Kane versus Bray Wyatt in an Inferno match. WWE Rewind. It shows um the Brock Lesnar CM Punk rivalry and the Heyman stuff pretty much. When Brock Lesnar attacked him after Money in the Bank and when CM Punk tried to attack Paul, Paul Heyman. Uh, CM Punk interview. He talks about how... Uh, he was a Paul Heyman guy, and he got into fight. And when he was, he got into fights that he didn't, that he had no business being in. So, and then he says that um, he's gonna um, that Curtis Axel is gonna get um a beaten for being a Paul Heyman guy. Let me take this off. It's starting to itch my head. And then um, what's his name? Uh, Paul Heyman. And then uh, CM Punk talk, says that he's gonna come for Lesnar, and he doesn't lie. He's gonna get Heyman. Caitlyn versus Layla. It's okay. AJ comes out, distracts Caitlyn, and Layla comes out and kicks her on the head. She says that Layla, that she attacked, that she did what she did to Caitlyn because um she was sick and tired of being like look not beating the focus as much. So and, and she said that after this she's gonna be the focus. Then we get ECW Unleashed Volume Two ad. Then it shows Cody Rhodes find Damian Sandow's briefcase, and they announced that summer term that it's gonna be Cody Rhodes versus Damian Sandow. It's finally official. We get Heath Slater with Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre versus Christian. Heath, Sl oh, Heath Slater celebrates, and um, uh, Christian ends up spearing him for the win. So that's fine with me. Um, I think the next thing that happens is the Paul Heyman thing. We'll see him punks backstage heading to his match. Um, might not be the next thing. I'll just go get to that. See, so then we get CM Punk versus Curtis Axel, um, and with Paul Heyman, um, not for the whole match because CM Punk tries to go and get Heyman, and um, but Axel stops him when they brawl around the win for a little bit. Then the match finally sucks. Curtis Axel takes control of CM Punk. Um, he does drop kicks. Um, Punch, uh, punches off the ropes, and then see, when Axel's in control, Heyman finally comes out and uh, watches the match. And see, throughout the match, CM Punk is trying to get Heyman, but Curtis Axel keeps stopping him. CM Punk starts to come back, and then he kicks Axel, and then Axel hits a neckbreaker, but Punk kicks out. He kicks Axel in the head, and then he tries to hurt Heyman again. Then Brock Lesnar comes out, and um, Curtis Axel pulls Hay Heyman outside the lane and Pulls Punk outside the ring and tries to attack him. But, um, Punk re re reverses it into a go to sleep. Lesnar attacks Punk. Um, but Punk fights him off a little bit. Does the, uh, springboard clothesline off the announcer's table. Hits him with a chair. But Lesnar hits, does a belly to belly, belly to belly, um, on the, on the outside on the floor. He goes for the F5. Punk reverses it to kicks and hits him with a chair. He has the advantage though, but he goes to attack Heyman instead. And then Lesnar takes the chair and F5's Punk and hits him with the chair repeatedly. So that was fine. Um, I still have a, I have a bad feeling now though that Punk is probably going to beat Lesnar. Because Lesnar has had the advantage the entire feud, so I wouldn't be surprised if he loses. Um, and I actually was right, wasn't I? Yeah, I was right. Um, so then it showed it again, Lesnar attacking Punk. And then we get Brock Lesnar, Curtis Axel, and Paul Heyman interview. It was cool to see them together because it's like a stable kind of with um, Heyman and Lesnar both being with uh, um, Punk, with Heyman. Um, and putting, Heyman challenges Punk to a match next week. Um, and Lesnar talks about how he's going to destroy Punk. And he's like, that's the best you can give me, Punk? I doubt that. So I'm just going to end this video off because... Um, it's about to hit 15 minutes, so um, that's so that's pretty much it, guys. Part two is coming up.